someone just discovered 3D text rendering. Two minutes into this elevator ride, I bet that the brass at Fox was like, holy sh**, you wanna start this with an elevator going down 45 floors before we get to anything resembling a movie? I mean, this would be impressive for audiences in 1894, but this is 1994, the year North came out. I bet that's what they said. Kudos to this security guard checking out the elevator shafts on what must be a slow day. But it seems pretty sloppy to me that Howard would leave this obvious bag out in the open that any asshole could glance and see from the access door. Hey, uh, are you not gonna radio this in? Seems like you might have a huge radio there on your right hand that you could use. After falling ten floors, none of these elevator passengers has thrown up or pissed their pants. Beverly Hills copping things! How come they send cops here? Shouldn't they send repair guys? This guy tried to start an unsuccessful YouTube channel called Elevator Sins. Six minutes! That's kind of astounding, actually. You had 23 minutes before you ran up 32 flights of stairs. Then you unscrewed a panel, climbed down to the elevator, looked at the bomb, played pop quiz, and then decided to defy orders, after which you ran up another 22 flights of stairs. Climbed another couple stories of ladders, grabbed the winch thing, my god, the six minutes is some bullshit. That bomb already blew minutes ago. Also, even with six minutes, you don't have enough time. You've got to finagle this cable through an air conditioning duct and that big ass fan. And to do that, you have to access a room between the roof and the elevator shaft. And I'm pretty sure getting a grappling hook through the center of that fan is going to be impossible, despite the line the movie's telling me in this shot. Okay, they were worried about the winch up on the roof holding, but there's no way this most convenient eye hole is going to hold. You can see where the prop master welded it probably an hour ago. I don't even understand why he's still here, but he does know the cops were called because he made a demand for money. So why is he acting like every little old sound? in the elevator shaft is some unexpected bugaboo. Also, we're gonna find out that Howard's been planning this elevator bomb for two years, and yet his plan involves him being stuck on a freight elevator with no way of keeping tabs on the cops to monitor whatever hero sh** they might try to do. Yes, the idea is that Howard wants to be there to get his rocks off when the elevator crashes, but he won't get to see any of it from here anyway. So why didn't he install cameras and do all of this from an apartment? Which is what he does later for the bus bomb. Usually they fall down now. This happens often, does it? They realize that the bomber is still in the building, which is a huge freaking leap, since the bomb went off three minutes early. Three minutes? That could be a timer issue or a wiring malfunction. These guys leap straight to, the bomber must still be here, even though that is fucking moronic. The elevators. Passenger cars were stopped. They checked them out. What about the freight elevators? Yeah, surprisingly no one thought to check those out at all, because of reasons. Jack and his partner go after the bomber without first calling in that they know the bomber is in the building or that they found said bomber. Lieutenant, we've got movement on the freight elevator. You mean the one elevator we didn't check? What are the odds? You f <laughs> You assholes are being way too blasé during this situation. Thanks to them, the only life taken by the terrorist bomb was his own. Notice how I conveniently said the terrorist bomb didn't kill anybody, but the terrorist knife did kill a security guard, so we won't be mentioning him in the statistics. Also, f that guy. Can't have been too great. Woke up alone. Implying a party has to end in sex to be a great party. And I'm here to tell you that the 1996 party at Tiffany's apartment in Oak Park, where two dudes fought and there was a public breakup, didn't end in me having sex or waking up with a bed friend, but that's still the greatest party I ever went to. A phone starts ringing near a loud explosion fire, and he hears it, and he decides to go answer it? Come the f*** on, man. I guess it's out of sheer cop intuition that Jack knows to answer this phone. Two years I spent setting up that elevator job. Two years I invested myself in it. But in roughly a week, I set up this bomb on a bus thing with the really complex feature of making it arm when the bus hits 50 miles an hour and it blows up if it goes under 50. This was no sweat. 3.7 million dollars. He wanted 3 million for the elevator one and now he's added 700,000 to this one? What is that, terrorist interest? Jack runs to catch up to the bus, but I don't know why he can't just call this into a cruiser in the area to stop the bus before it starts going 50 miles an hour. Let's just say it now, this bus is if it ever hits 50, it's gonna get caught up in all that LA traffic and it won't have a chance. I just couldn't handle the freeways anymore. I got so tense. Your desire to relax runs counter to the needs of sparkle motion. Somehow a bus on this wide open section of freeway is not going 50 miles an hour. And people wonder why the bus isn't a more popular mode of transportation. Still, there's almost no logical reason the bus hits 50 during this drive. It was cruising along at 40 to 45, now it's about to hit 50 in roughly the same traffic we've seen for the last five minutes. And it has just as good a chance of going under 50 right after it hits 50. So during this entire time Keanu's been trying to get this guy's attention, the bus driver sped up four more miles per hour. Don't slow down! The bus driver couldn't hear you every single time you tried to tell him about the bomb, but now you say this and you make this move and he somehow knows that means don't slow down. Are you insured? Yeah, why? 
entertaining movie about this guy trying to explain this to his insurance company was never made. Also, this definitely would have caused a 40-car pileup and probably more deaths than if the bus exploded. But sure, Jack needs to get on the bus at all costs. Also, also, this powder blue Ford Taurus is a stunt driver in the wrong f***ing place, man. He's clearly going to smack into the back of the Jaguar. But then in the next shot, out of the bus's mirror, he's well behind where Keanu's car is. I don't care about your crime. You should, though, dude. You're a police officer. For all you know, he's trying to avoid you for killing a bunch of babies or being part of this very bus bomb plot. You don't know. Yet you dismiss his crime like it's nothing. We're just two cool guys just hanging out. Oh, Helping. All right, movie over. Not sure Sam can keep this bus going 50 while he veers wildly into L.A. traffic and while Annie switches places with him. It was a good run while it lasted. I guess the next hour will be about Death taking Sandra Bullock's form so that he can learn about life on Earth. And Keanu will have to play Death at a game of chess because that's what he always does. Why did the bomber create a bomb that explodes if the bus slows to under 50 miles per hour? It's not to buy time to do a heist, because there have already been a few times the bus could have and should have been going slow enough to explode. He can set a bomb, sure, but he can't dictate that the bus will stay above 50 if a passenger pulls a gun and shoots the f***ing bus driver. This plan is idiotic. The fact that they set this movie in L.A. is the dumbest thing about this film. You cannot drive 50 miles per hour for more than three minutes anywhere in L.A. without encountering traffic jams. Set this shit in Chicago, where in the 90s there were almost no traffic jams on a loop and everyone drove 90 miles per hour or faster. I say this with experience. Merging out of the Chicago loop in 1995 with an 84 rusted out Chevy Cavalier is one of the scariest moments of my entire life. Me. Oh darn. God bless Alan Ruck. I sure do miss him. Huh? He's not dead? I thought he... Oh, that was a different Alan. Wow. Does his family know he's still alive? They gotta be hella relieved, no? There's enough C4 on this thing to put a hole in the world. That's not really all that impressive if you think about it. You cannot make a turn this sharp at 55 miles per hour without falling over. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna add 10 sins for every time this bus should go below 50 and doesn't. It happens a lot more than that, but I'm being charitable. He's watching college football, a night game no less, early in the morning on two TVs. I want to look at the files for the last 10 years. We did the mug shots already. It's not gonna help. No. I want to look at cops. Sounds like you could have said that in the first f***ing place. Traffic is moving freely through this lane, and this lady with her cans, it's no baby, it's only cans, decides, F*** it, I will walk across this lane without even looking, because this movie needs to have an Annie killed a baby but not really scene. And there's a don't walk sign! This is not New York, lady, there are rules. Oh, it's cans! I think it's a baby! Cans! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! There was no baby, no it was full of cans! You... Whether it was cans or a baby, it's a f***ing dark place for a breezy action movie to take a viewer for even a second. It's okay, all these kids are also full of cans. Why are they in school? Why are they in school? Seemed pretty clear to me that they were being led by a teacher somewhere. Maybe don't blame your kid murdering tendencies on other people, Annie. That cop car directly in front of the bus is a dick. Get out of the way, asshole! And the bus obviously breaks here. Annie. What? It's, it's my name, Annie. Annie. Is it close to ma'am? Try not falling in love with Sandra Bullock in this movie. Seriously, you can't. You're in love with her right now. You might even tolerate the lake house after this. A while back he held some people for ransom. A while back? How long ago was that elevator shit? How long did they wait to hand out medals to hero cops? Like, a few days, right? That shit was last week at most, you dickhead. Gigantor! <laughs> he called that guy Gigantor and I laughed for ages. It's every bit as good as when Jack Black called the School of Rock Girl turkey sub. Come on! Come on, lady, give me your hat! Okay, I guess these SWAT guys don't know the full story about who can get off the bus and who can't. It could be a miscommunication on their part, and they think Helen is okay to go, but both Jack and Mac fall asleep during this scene. Jack turns his attention to the rest of the bus for some reason, and Mac completely checks out. How are you doing? You alright? Annie, are you okay? Will you tell us? Are you okay, Annie? It's an interchange. There might be an incline. Floor it! I feel like you'd try at least two things before attempting this obviously impossible jump. One, since this freeway is at least six lanes wide and has at least one usable shoulder, why wouldn't you at least entertain the idea of making a hard turn and driving the other way? Especially since they've already done a hard turn, making everybody sit on one side of the bus. And while Howard said don't call him, maybe this is an exception. Ask him if he'll disarm it for a few seconds so they can turn around. I mean, maybe that jump has a lesser chance of succeeding than those two things. Here's another thing. Maybe they didn't have time to call these road workers and tell them to remove barricades and shit, but that could have at least been tried. And what about this road? This road looks like it could be used, right? The sign's blocking the view, but come on, there had to be a better way, right? Also, I find it curious that even if all the other roads could have been used, that this is the only one that doesn't have impassable barricades on it. A one section of highway where safety might be the most important, all it has is signs and shit. <laughs> so ridiculous. I want to remove sins. I mean, this is exciting, right? Speed's not the same movie without it. But we have to be a fair judge and add 25, 25 sins for this.
Also, nothing in the road before the gap in this shot. Sudden wood to jump in this shot. You okay? Yeah. You okay? There's a sign at the window that he struck you. Accendo, Annie. This bus will now drive around with torn wheels for a really super long time. All right, I want you back real fast. Howard definitely didn't say what we just heard. Did he change into a new completely white t-shirt prior to this scene? What the f***? That thing is pristine. Okay, so we're going to find out that there's nothing Jack can do to disarm the bomb. But why doesn't he think that Howard will blow up the bus if he tries this? Remember, Jack thinks that if they try to unload passengers, even without the news helicopters flying overhead, giving Howard a play-by-play, -play, he'll know something is up and detonate the bomb. If that's the case, he'd know about someone messing with the bomb, right? Don't get dead! Fucking hell. This is like telling a starting pitcher in the World Series, don't wild pitch your way to a benching in the first inning. It does nothing to help viewers distinguish Jeff Daniels from Jeff Bridges if both of them star as bomb experts in different movies. I can't bypass it, will fire! It's a collapsible circuit. Oh. So a vehicle towing a human on a wire doesn't look ahead to spot debris, therefore causing this emergency swerve. Holding on only by a screwdriver stabbed into a gas tank, he survives this. Did you have any luck with the bomb? Yeah, it didn't go off. But the good news is that I did go off on your mom last night. You're not too bright, man. But you got some big, round, hairy corners. <laughs> That's very gross, Ortiz. Jeez. Did almost dying zap Jack of all his sense of humor? Ever since he got pulled out from under the bus, he's been a total dick. Why would you go inside a suspected bomber's house? Like, isn't wire their own house to blow part of the evil bomber code? And these assholes don't even bother to check for explosives before walking inside. I obviously don't want Harry to die, but the scene is so well done. A simple red light and a beeping sound, followed by Jeff Daniels' f I'm dead face. As the bomber gives instructions to Jack for the money drop, I'd like to remind you that this bus could have and should have easily blown up at least a half a dozen times before now. I'll be dead. Jack notices a small insignia on Annie's jacket that says Arizona on it, and extrapolates Arizona Wildcats and connects it to Howard calling Annie Wildcat a couple of times, which is a huge stretch. What we're about to find out is that Howard has a camera on the bus, and he's been watching the inside of it the whole time, but there is no f***ing way he saw that logo on Annie's jacket from a distance in black and white. Arizona Wildcats. Johnny Utah. Okay, so did Howard also make the bus mirror a two-way mirror? Because that camera is pointed directly at the back of it. So how does the camera see through that? Bus has got a camera right in your face, you can see the whole bus. He's been playing me from minute one. Did Howard's camera really affect that much, though? Absolutely nothing that's happened in this movie has been a result of Howard being able to see inside the bus. The only thing it really does is allow Jack to come up with the looping video idea. So, while it seems like the camera is devastating news, it's really a plot device to help Jack more than hurt him. He, he can see me, but can he hear me? Doesn't look like he's just watching. Okay, first of all, there is no f***ing way he can be certain at all that they aren't being listened to. Microphones can be tiny, and don't have to be attached to the video camera, and you only saw one side of the camera! Second of all, and perhaps more importantly, why the f*** didn't the bomber put a simple microphone on the bus? It could've given him so many advantages, and he wouldn't have fallen for this fake-out they're about to do by looping the tape! There's a signal going to that bus. So Technically, the signal is coming from the bus, but I don't want to be pedantic, except that I do. The diminishing fuel part of this movie is as much of a liar as a countdown timer on a bomb is. That needle was going down fast when we saw it last. I'm pretty sure this movie cheated when it comes to showing this monitor. Earlier there was a wide shot of all the monitors, and I swear the one showing the passengers is either missing or it's turned off. Why is there so much debris on the runway? Why isn't there anyone actively clearing debris while there's a bus full of hostages circling the runway? I can't do this! Jack, I can't do this! Okay, you stay here and blow up then. I know that the LAPD told the newscasters to stop their live broadcast so that the looping video would work, but I don't know how you keep this a secret. Also, hey, why didn't Howard have any way of knowing when his bomb had gone off? Let's bring the recently traumatized bomb hostage along with us to the scene where we think the bomber is going to pick up the money and just leave her in an ambulance with two non-cop EMTs to protect her. What could go wrong? Also, wearing your watch with the face on the inside of your wrist. She leaves the ambulance! She waited like five minutes, got impatient, and left. Howard just happens to find Annie wandering around near the Pershing Square money drop place. You need literal dumb luck for this to happen. He's never late. In the two encounters you've had with him? In the elevator, yes, he was early. For the whole thing with the bus, there hasn't been a measurable instance of him being late, early, or on time with anything. Turn it on. What for? It has moved. Just do it! Why in the f*** would you not have the GPS tracker thing turned on no matter what? Do you get charged for every second it's on or something? 
I don't know what kind of research it takes to figure out the exact placement of a trash bin over an accessible place next to the subway, but hats off to Howard Payne for finding it. And let's not forget, he carved this hole in secret, either above the ground where he could easily be seen, or from underneath where he'd have to lug a ladder and cutting equipment through a private subway area without being seen. And what about trash? There might be a pile of trash just sitting here and some electrician yelling, what the f*** are this shit? And your plan is over at that point. Holy sh this train is still leaving the station? The conductor closed the doors forever ago, and Howard was understandably very eager to leave. Jack was nowhere near the train when Howard told the conductor to start moving, yet here he is. <laughs> Holy sh what a bunch of whatever this is. This is West Wing's Richard Schiff here, in a dialogue-free thankless role, and in just three years he'd be co-starring in Lost World Jurassic Park with West Wing to follow. It just goes to show that everyone starts somewhere, but I'm still sending this movie for wasting a talent like Richard Schiff. After shooting the conductor, shouldn't there be what is known as the dead man switch that stops runaway trains, just like the Soul Asylum song taught us probably? It's not because you're a woman, alright? This is a weird time to assure someone that you're a feminist, Howard. Doing this. <laughs> Light shadowing. I mean, since Howard is a former cop, wouldn't he know about this? Seems like this would have been part of the rules, and he would have warned everyone, a paint bomb goes off, I blow up a school, or something. Why was he even opening the money here anyway? Did he think Jack was going to take the bribe he jokingly offered? How none of these bullets hits Jack is a math problem for God to solve. Or at least Will Hunting. So much had to go right here, and it all did, so I'm assuming he ate a Mario star somewhere in a previous scene that got cut, right? Where's Payne? He lost his head. Rejected line from The Running Man makes it into this movie. Howard has made bombs with foolproof triggers, and here Jack unsnaps something from Annie's harness, and then he sees a green light and just casually tosses it away like there can't possibly be any other surprises. Track isn't finished. God damn, what in LA is finished? If these assholes got on an airplane right now, there would be a piece of sky missing. There's a curb ahead. I'm gonna speed it up. Make it jump the track. Oh, so basically a repeat of what you did with the bus when the freeway wasn't finished? Sweet. I love it when a movie that hasn't even had a sequel yet plays the hits. Jack, please! Please! Jack! This might actually rival Titanic for the number of times someone says Jack. Good thing the train still responds to this specific control on the shot all to hell control board. You'd think with a runaway train barreling towards them, someone would have communicated that to these guys at some point. Like, hey guys, there's a train a few miles down the track, and we're doing all we can to stop it, but you might want to get the hell out of there. By the way, this is how selfish Jack's decision to speed up the train is. He doesn't know how many people might be affected by this, and who might be in the way of the train. It could be a festival of some sort happening in the street when this thing crashes through. Luckily, it appears to be an abandoned street exclusively for the wreck itself. Thank God. <laughs> What the f*** are you talking about? Does this subway car look like something an everyday motorist drives? And shouldn't you have seen a giant subway car crashing and skidding down the road before you even had to swerve to miss it? Both of them have to have utterly obnoxious breath right now, but sure, wipe your halitosis tongues across one another. And the guy who pulled a gun on the bus and accidentally shot the driver went home and had dinner with his wife and kids and never faced any consequences for his incredibly criminal actions. Possible. Did you know that we create monthly exclusive videos for our Sin Club members? Bonus outtakes. I don't know, Peter. Meth is a hell of a drug. Extra Sins videos. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And even member chosen Sin commentaries. I love this. <laughs> I love this this kind of, uh, of a Sin because it's just, it's so silly. Pick our next video and see the exclusives at patreon.com slash cinemasins. Or click the link in the description below. Spider-Man is not a parade. You do not need to stop traffic for Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I see him. There's a gun by his hand. He's not moving. Ah! That's not easy what I just did. Give it up! You're out of options! Maniacal laugh. <laughs> I got mail over in Hermosa Beach. And I rent this little place for Simone over in Compton, where you stay. Mm. And about four blocks away, I got this young 19-year-old country girl named Sharonda. I found her on a bus stop two days out of Georgia, barefoot country as a chicken coop. Took her to my place in Compton, told her it was Hollywood. You are a good, kind man. One day people can write songs about you. Hail to the bus driver, bus driver, man.
$105,000, and this happens to be one of the fastest production cars on the planet. See what the 16 four seconds, sweetie. This is a limited edition. You damn right it's limited. Man, everybody got AIDS and shit. Mr. Peterson? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think I owe you an apology, sir. Well, I should say you do. I, uh... I, I, I... Well, I think you should be sorry, for Christ's sake. A family member dies, and you insult me. What the hell is the matter with you, anyway? Get off this! That's one of my favorite Cracker songs.